sorry about that, babe. Quick turnaround here for me. Another Deathless run. This time it's going to be Contra on the NES. Um, lots to talk about, so let's just get started. So, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, a lot of my resets actually came <laughs> on the first level. It's actually surprisingly easy to get clipped here. Um, it's relatively easy, which doesn't make any sense why it'd be so easy to get killed, but it just kind of is. First things first is when you're up here, you're going to want to make sure that you stay up top. It just makes things so much easier in order to kind of get the early spread shot. You do have the ability to get another spread shot uh, a little bit later into the level, but when you're on the top, it's just it's super duper easy. As you can see, I'm just kind of running by everything. And I actually don't really slow down until right now with the second red gunner. Um, yeah, the combination of the spread shot and the rapid fire R power up is like just very, very deadly. Um, it carries you through the whole game, really. In, in ways, it's actually easier uh, to beat the game without dying <laughs> than it is to beat while dying, because uh, when you downgrade after you get killed, uh, it could be a little bit rough. But there's really not too much to say strategy-wise in the first level. Just get the spread shot, uh, get the rapid fire if you can. And I like to take my time here on this boss. Uh, Speedrunners, and occasionally you could just walk right up to the uh, this part right here and shoot it and break through. But I had a few instances where I actually got hit with those like balls. So I pretty much just stay over to the left side of the screen and take my time. Now, stage two is also similar to stage four. It's like a kind of a cool mix-up mode, if you will, revolving around busting through these uh, barricades. Um, if you don't have rapid shot, that red guy that popped out there does drop it, so don't fret too much. You want your rapid fire spread on these levels. If you don't have the rapid fire, it actually gets a lot more annoying. Um, just keep like spamming it mostly. And on here, um, you could actually just kneel down like I am and not even move. <laughs> not too difficult. Um, here, this kind of starts a little uh, strategy that I do throughout stage two and stage four where oftentimes I won't shoot everything. I won't shoot all the guns. I'll just keep lying down and just being very careful, you know what I mean? Not to get hit by the uh, projectiles. And when you see the big ass you know, whatever you want to call it, lock. That's when you know you're at the end. So. Then you get the boss. I like to jump over to the left. Uh, you actually don't have to kill the gunners, I don't think, in order to beat the boss, but they're kind of in the way anyway, and obviously if they're shooting you, you want to take them out. So I usually take them out in the exact way that I did here, and then I'll kind of start over to the right and kind of move back and forth, but kind of stay towards the middle, I guess. Middle and right section on that boss, and it goes down pretty quick, as you can see. Again, spread shot is king. So now we're gonna move on to stage three, which is known as waterfall. Uh, this one could be a little tricky. There's a lot more stuff going on. Obviously the falling water and all that kind of stuff could be a little bit distracting, especially if the enemy is shooting um, various things at you. I also just realized that my Elgato is plugged in. I hope it's not messing up my sound. Anyway. Um, so you're just gonna kind of want to work your way up. I like to stay to the left first. Um, and I'm very methodical at this point from here on out. <laughs> I take my time, I kill things appropriately, and I try to make sure that I'm not accidentally getting incorrect weapons because that'll basically uh, spell an end to the run. You'll see me pass up on a lot of power-ups and stuff. I'll be honest with you, I don't really know the game that well. I couldn't tell you what's in every single one of them, so I just opt for the whole... If I have a spread shot with the rapid fire, I'm probably not grabbing much. <laughs> Which, like, for example, right there, luckily for me it was spread shot because it was kind of in the way. But as we go up here, I'm actually getting a little bit of weird uh, RNG with a lot of jumpy guys, which is kind of annoying, so I'm just taking my time. I occasionally, you'll see me, like, jump up like I did, um, and that's to kind of move the screen, and then I focus on the turrets. Here, you're gonna have to jump on a moving platform. Be careful not to grab the M if you're like me and you accidentally hit it out. Uh, I've died up here as well from errant bullets and being a little bit too hasty. So just be careful. You could have guys spawning all the way to the top. Now for this boss, I like to start on the left side of the screen and just mash the spread fire. I will then jump over this projectile, keep shooting and move over to the right to kind of do the same thing to this arm. Uh, you don't have to kill the arm, 
question mark? I don't remember, but I always do. And then ultimately I stand right here on these two little pillar things and keep firing up at the boss until it dies. Again, I don't remember if you have to kill the arms, but I advise you do it no matter what. Um, so, yeah. Not too bad. And now stage four is basically a beefed up version of stage two. There's more screens and a little bit more, uh, you know, hazards and stuff to deal with. Same old strategy here, guys. If you don't really have to move much, don't bother. <laughs> I never jump on these levels whatsoever. Pretty much just lay down a lot and move from right to left occasionally. I remember this. I actually almost got clipped a little while ago by an errant bullet. You gotta be careful, man. I'm telling you, Contra could take it all away in a second. Obviously, one hit and you die, as long, unless you uh, have a force field. So just be careful. Um, at this point, I was probably getting a little impatient here and there because two runs prior to this, I literally was at the last boss, and the last boss was basically dead, and I fucked up and got hit and I died, and I was so mad. So I was kind of getting impatient at this point, but the rule of the game is being patient. And here's another instance, guys, where you don't even need to get up, just lay down and keep firing. Patience and mashing the button, baby. That's what it's all about. After you take out that middle turret, you just gotta take out these uh, two locks. I don't even bother shooting the red guys, because I don't wanna, again, don't even know what he drops. If he drops, you know, like a fire or a laser, I don't want it, so... Better off avoiding it altogether. I like to drop down to the floor to take out, you know, the enemies and the rollers, and then kinda shoot up there. And then this brings us to the most interesting one. I take out the turret, and then I focus on the hazards and the enemies, and then I have to do some kind of weird, like, jump fire. I don't know if there's a quicker way to do this, but at the very, very tippy top of my arc, I have to fire, and it takes eight shots uh, to kill it. <clears throat> a little bit annoying. That's my least favorite part about it. And then, like I said, once you see the big ending orb lock, whatever the hell you want to call it, you know that that's the last screen before the boss, so... Stay patient. Lay down when you have to, fire when you can. Boss time, very similar to the boss of stage two, uh, except there's gonna be some enemies that come out on the screen. So make sure you deal with those appropriately and try to uh, take out the turret in the middle as quickly as possible. These blue guys jump down, so be wary of that as well. Now up here, you just keep firing basically. Uh, these are homing bubbles. Occasionally, I do miss them. I don't know if I missed them on this run or not, but if you do, you could easily jump over them. They kind of track you, but they also kind of don't. They sort of just give up at some point. So, um, yeah, that's that. And now we're on to stage five. In my opinion, stage five, uh, stage six, and stage seven are the hardest areas of the game, especially stage six. Stage six is the most difficult, mostly because of the boss. But a lot of people probably do have trouble with the snow fields. Um, my advice here is, again, take your time, be patient, and when it comes to those bombs, pretty sure that only the actual explosion can kill you. So just keep pushing forward, keep firing, be patient. Don't be freaked out by the bombs when they're in the air. Yeah, when they're in the air, only be freaked out by them when they're hitting the ground. Now, occasionally you will get shitty RNG where you'll have the, uh, the soldier guys coming from behind and shooting you and stuff, and all I could say is just keep your wits about you and head on a swivel. I actually do have a tough time turning around in this game, I'll be honest with you. Like, if I have a lot of people coming from behind, I'm gonna have some uh, trouble with it, not gonna lie. Those three power-ups, by the way, you can grab all of them. It's a rapid shot, a spread shot, and a bomb that clears a screen. Kinda helps a little bit there. And now you're gonna get into the weird section of the level, which has these <laughs> spike bulldozer things. Position yourself all the way to the left of the screen as far as you can, and just keep mashing, and as long as you're mashing fast, you should kill them very quickly. And then you can jump over it just to be safe. I think you could probably walk over it, but I'll jump over it to be safe. Like I said, I got kind of crappy RNG in this level. Lots of guys coming from behind. Uh, makes things a little bit more difficult for me. And now you're gonna have another instance of these guys. Um, same strategy, nothing changes at all, surprisingly. A little bit lazy, I'll be honest, on the devs part, but it's fine. <laughs> and a rule of thumb typically is I'm always just gonna keep firing. You can never be too sure. And we're almost at the end. The boss can be tricky here. I'm just gonna talk about the boss, because realistically the rest of this level is very similar to the stuff that you already encountered. Bombs, turret guys, being patient. So, if the boss spawns on the left, 
it actually can get somewhat annoying. If the boss spawns to the right or the middle, you can pretty much one cycle it with ease. Luckily for me on this attempt it did. On the attempt that I was mentioning, uh, where I died at the very very end, it actually spawned on the left and I almost died at this boss because I didn't one cycle it and I had to jump over. It shoots these things down into the side. Eh, I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> mash away. So here, in my opinion, stage 6 is the toughest uh, in the game. And lots of hazards. So here I'm gonna drop down, again keep firing. When it comes to the turret guys, you gotta keep the same strat as the snow field, which is get down on the ground and hope that you're getting good spawns with the enemies. Before I jump, I make sure that the fire has retracted to the ceiling, <clears throat> and now we're gonna get into a bunch of fire platforming. If you lay down, the fire cannot hurt you, Wait for your cycles to jump up, be patient, and you will survive. I like to run all the way here, wait for the fire, jump, kneel, jump up, lay down, not kneel, and then jump up. Take this guy out, walk to the edge, spawn the fire, and you can actually jump over it. <clears throat> now be careful, fire's gonna come out of the wall here. I wanna position myself good and wait for the right cycle to go down through the wall, or through the, whatever you wanna call it, ceiling, wall, whatever. You can actually get killed there. I'll talk about that more a little bit later. But for this section, the name of the game is going fast. Now occasionally you can get some shitty RNG with people coming from the back like you saw there, and I actually lucked out. Because you can get into a loop where, where guys just keep fucking spawning, and I've lost a couple runs because of that. Luckily for me, I was able to get down in time and kill them, and everything was fine. But that area could be a run killer. And now we have the boss coming up, who is also a run killer. Because he is very RNG heavy, and I get really weird RNG here, and I somehow survive. I don't know how. <laughs> I have no idea how I survived this fight. Those jumps that I made were the luckiest fucking things in the world. You could sometimes kill this dude without him throwing a single projectile or without jumping. And in that fight, what, he jumped three times and he threw five projectiles? I have no fucking clue how I survived that. Anyways. Stage 7. Uh, there, I like to get into a cycle of, I just keep running through. Here, I like to touch this, fall back, and shoot it. I'll keep firing on my way through here. Uh, enemies and walls will spawn. You can grab the R if need be, but you don't need it at this point, obviously, if you're not dying. More walls coming up, just keep firing. You're gonna wanna jump up to the top here. This is very important. Be careful of that wall, I almost forgot about it. You guys probably saw how close it was. Another wall is gonna spawn, so keep firing. Wait for your turn. Now, very important, you must fall on this, jump up here, and grab this invincibility and fall through the floor. This will take you through almost the entire level. If you don't get the invincibility, good luck rest of way, as they like to say. Um, and I did want to point out back in the other level, um, in that one section where you have to fall through the floor with the fire, if you're not careful, you can get clipped by the fire or actually even stand up. So please be careful when you're going through there. But back to this level. More walls, and this is also shitty fucking RNG. I don't know how many times I've gone through here with no enemy spawns. If that happens, just try to keep your wits about you. You're gonna have a wall spawn there. That pattern is really easy, I'm sure you guys saw it. Uh, you, when the when the one's going up, you pretty much just move to go under the next one. It's, it's super easy. This is another section where there's lots of gunners, and depending on your RNG, you might have people coming from behind. Luckily, I didn't. And now, if you have the spread shot with Rapid, you just run and hold up and keep firing and you will burst through to the final area of the game. Stage 8, the Alien's Lair, which is actually, I'll be honest with you guys, probably like the fourth or third easiest level in the game. Just take your time. I don't know what's in those, I'm not even going to grab them. First, you're going to have to take care of this gigantic alien head. And the way that I like to do it is kind of just jump and keep firing, and if I feel like the uh, little alien shrimp boys are about to get me, I will back off and kill them accordingly. It won't take too long. Now, I'm overly cautious here. I take out every one of these things. Those, um, almost dandelion-looking things are actually very dangerous. So I will take my time. I believe that one's a spread shot, by the way, that just passed me. Um, but again, obviously, if you're not dying and you already have the spread shot, you don't need it. If you're playing casually, I guess it probably could help you if you've already died. <clears throat> so again, I'm just being very, very patient, taking out these guys as best I can. That section is best done while laying down. Um, 
The rapid fire spread shot does do a really good job of taking them out pretty quickly. Again, as long as you were taking your time. <coughs> Excuse me. Lots of talking late at night, you know? So we're just focusing again on taking out these uh, dandelion shooters. And pretty soon we're actually going to be encountering our first alien. I think it's after these guys up here in the ceiling. They take like two or three shots, so be careful. And uh, we got one last shooter here, and then we're actually at the final boss. Which uh, almost seems like a throwback to Ninja Guide in a little bit. Very similar to the final boss. I like to take out these bottom, uh, I guess, almost face hugger spawns. <clears throat> and then in almost a surefire way with the rapid fire spread shot is to stand right next to it and fire up. You'll be doing minimal damage to the heart, which is ultimately the thing you need to kill, but it will also kill a lot of the aliens. Towards the end, I get very impatient, and I just start firing at it, and luckily it's dead. Thank God. That's it, guys. That's Contra. Deathless. Um, I realize that, you know, again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or anything. Speedrunners do this shit in their sleep. I'm sure a lot of people beat this game without dying in the past, but... I'm trying to get as many challenge runs done as I can and as quick as possible. And if you don't count my vacation, I basically get, uh, got Castlevania and Contra done, I don't know man, in less than a week's time. Castlevania took about well, maybe a little bit over a week, but there was also a few days where I didn't really try. And Contra actually only took me two days with, I don't know, maybe five hours total of, of time into it, maybe six. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I actually checked for shits and giggles. Uh, I would have been, I think, in the top 250? I don't remember what the number was. If I if I submitted this for a speedrun and I tracked my time, I actually would have beat quite a bit of people on the speedrun.com board. Nowhere near the world record or anything like that. I'm not a speedrunner. I was obviously being super patient in a lot of areas because I didn't really trust my skills, but... Yeah, guys, that's Contra Deathless. At the very least, hopefully I showed you some strategies that can maybe help you out in your playthrough. Obviously, if you die, you have to grab power-ups all over again, and I wasn't super thorough with that for you. This was more so just covering the Deathless run itself. But uh, if you've enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I do my best to reply to all comments in all videos, and I will continue on with more challenge runs, just a matter of how long it takes me. Until next time.